The Thoughts of Daisy Pumpkin 23 A fool sees not the same tree that a wise man sees. The reactions of people to this video, as evidenced in the comments section here, in response videos to this one, and in the comments sections of the response videos, are startling proof of a lot of the mental problems that many anti-feminists have. I'm almost tempted to say, although I don't like to speculate on people's motives unless they themselves have overtly stated them, that Christy didn't actually want her question to be answered, that, in fact, the act of asking these questions was a statement in itself. And the hilarious responses from commenters further substantiate her statement. Perhaps the combination of the video and resulting comments and reactions constitute a feminist situationist art prank in itself. She sets out to expose the stupidity of anti-feminist commenters and in their droves, they swarm in like rats, happy to oblige in exposing their own stupidity. She could now compile a book from these comments and comments elsewhere, and it would be a very telling expose of the mental deficiencies of so many anti-feminist commenters. Perhaps Christie is an evil puppet mistress, playing all the moronic commenters in a huge psychological experiment like laboratory rats. Whatever her motives, the end result has been an amazing expose of the common mental failings of so many anti-feminists. I shall elaborate on that shortly. Well done, anti-feminists. You might as well have written I is stupid on your forehead in black marker pen. Putting aside any speculations on Christie's motives, taking her video just at face value, and working from the assumption that the questions were asked in the genuine spirit of inquiry, the tone and volume of responding comments, and the fact that not one single person has attempted to answer the questions is very revealing of a huge flaw in the anti-feminist camp. I have lost count of how many times I have seen anti-feminist commenters claim feminism is no longer needed in the West because women here have achieved equality, regardless of whether or not the feminist they are addressing has made a claim to the contrary. Yet, as this video and the reactions to it prove, when asked to substantiate that claim, they all run around like headless chickens, trying to disguise their terror at being put on the spot by spouting spurious and misused academic terms that only further demonstrate their mental failings. The first and most common mental failing I see with so many anti-feminists is their inability to understand context and underlying meaning. They take everything at its most dullard, oversimplified either or, and can't grasp underlining meaning or overall context unless it is spelled out to them in words of one syllable. This is vividly illustrated by all the morons arguing here and elsewhere, such as in other comment sections beneath response videos, about burden of proof, to say nothing about the morons who are misusing the term null hypothesis. A common thing that is being said is, paraphrasing, the burden of proof is on you, Christy, because you are the one claiming that feminism is needed in the West. This claim is also effectively being made in some of the moronic comments blathering on about rebuttal. This is proof that a very high number of anti-feminists can't understand context. This video is a standalone project, and responses to it should only relate to what is being asked or said in the video itself. Whether or not Christie may have asserted some claim in the past, or feminists have said, and other such associative fallacies, is irrelevant. In a fair and honest debate, everything that a speaker may or may not have asserted in a previous debate should have no bearing on how we judge the relative merits of what they are saying in a particular debate. This video should rightfully be viewed as a specific and standalone debate, and if Christie hasn't asserted any claim in this specific video, then there is no burden of proof on her. End of story. Secondly, there's the comments that consist of stupid nitpicking and other avoidance tactics. You haven't defined equality, etc. Funny how the lack of a coherent definition of equality never stopped anti-feminists asserting that women have achieved equality. Again, all this nitpicking is a failure to grasp context. Despite the fact that the video is less than 100 words, all in plain English and clearly expressed, they appear to have missed even the most basic context of what is being said. Christie is allowing people to use their own definition of equality, which I think is very charitable, and isn't specifying what metrics people need to use. Again, very charitable. Christie isn't defining the terms of the argument, 
she is asking you if you can prove your own argument by your own definition and your own choice of metrics, which means that any of your nitpicking objections about definitions could actually be factored into your arguments. How much more charitable can you get? The last resort of intellectual cowards is to retreat to arguing from hypothetical situations. If I try to attempt to answer these questions, she'll just say I was wrong. You don't know until you try. And if you try and she says you're wrong, then use some mental flexibility to respond to that reaction. Though I appreciate most anti-feminists have an incredible lack of mental flexibility, as evidenced by the fact that they keep arguing that black is white, even when their assertions are proven wrong, such as the person on this comment thread accusing Christie of conducting a survey. No matter how wrong their position is, they can rarely be flexible and adaptive in a discussion, and will just keep restating their original point over and over again until we all die of boredom, as evidenced so many times in the comment section here. Thirdly, there's the sheer rudeness of gatecrashing somebody's video and demanding that, despite the video asking a specific set of questions to commenters, everyone stop what they're doing, ignore the topic under discussion, and answer their questions. Surely good manners would dictate that you have no right to expect answers to your questions if somebody has actually asked you a question first and you have ignored it and failed to reply. This ignorance and lack of social skills and social awareness, whether in the real world or the virtual world, again reveals significant mental failings. This comment thread for me is the final proof that a huge number of anti-feminists aren't just wrong in their arguments. Perhaps deep down they're aware of their own mental failings, which is why they have to constantly big themselves up by pompously declaring themselves masters of rationality and logic, and trying to show off by using a lot of fancy pants terms that they often use incorrectly to pretend they're academics. I almost feel sorry for them. It must be very hard negotiating life and dealing with people when you're so hampered with so many deficiencies. Paraphrasing Abraham Maslow, when the only tool you have is a hammer, you tend to treat everything as if it were a nail.